In this video, I'm going to talk about HTTPS. Uh, we're going to talk about what it is, why it's important that your site uses it. I'm not going to go into full config details. I have other videos on that. This is more just big picture discussion. So with that preface aside, let's jump in, starting with what is HTTPS? And all HTTPS is, is basically the secure version of the HTTP protocol. Uh, and nowadays, it's considered best practice standard that every site should be running via HTTPS. Uh, and there's a few different reasons for that. One most obvious reason is if you look at a site that isn't using HTTPS, and I have an example here where I'm just loading the site via HTTP, you'll notice that the browser has this lovely little not secure message, which is not something that's going to instill a lot of confidence in your visitors as they're browsing your site. So from a practical standpoint, that's why we want to be using HTTPS, because we don't see that message. We see this little lock icon. Uh, the other reasons is what HTTPS provides, and there's really two main benefits that it provides. The first is encryption. When you have HTTPS set up, any data that's transferred between your server and your visitors is going to be encrypted. And that's important because um, a, a common vulnerability you face as we work on the web are things called man-in-the-middle attacks, right? So let's say you're in a public coffee shop, you're on a public Wi-Fi network, there could be somebody nearby who is listening in on traffic being sent back and forth on that Wi-Fi network. And if the data that your server is sending and receiving is not encrypted, then anybody listening in on that would be able to see the raw, like plain text version of that data. Um, and obviously that could compromise important things like personal details, passwords, so on and so forth. So that's key benefit one we get with HTTPS is encryption. Another benefit is that HTTPS can establish authenticity. Uh, to understand how this works, uh, we'll see in a moment how the way that we set up HTTPS is we have to get a certificate for our site. And if we're getting this certificate from a third party, there's a process involved there to actually establish that we are the rightful owners of that site. And just as an example of this, let me pull up a banking website. So I'm just going to go to bankofamerica.com and I'm going to look at the underlying certificate information for this site that is allowing this HTTPS connection. And the way I'm going to do that is just clicking this little lock icon and then I'm going to click connection is secure. And then the last option is to see information about the certificate for this site. And here we learn that this certificate was granted by this company called Entrust, which is a third party certification authority. Uh, and their job is basically to issue these certificates. Uh, and when they do, they verify that you are the company you say you are behind this site. Uh, we can see details or confirmation of that. If we look at the details of the certificate, it has the uh, business information for Bank of America. We can assume that if we trust and trust the company, that we can also trust that they're verifying, okay, yes, the site you are visiting right now is in fact owned by the company Bank of America. Now, not all certificates come with this level of um, authority. Uh, it's also possible to just generate your own certificate that's not coming from some third-party certification authority. And that would allow you to set up an HTTPS connection so you get the benefits of encryption without necessarily having this like stamp of authenticity. And oftentimes that's plenty sufficient. Um, the situations where you do want to have a third-party certificate like this is if you are dealing with critical information, if you're a bank or an online store dealing with monetary transactions, or maybe you're in the health industry, or just any situation where it's very important that you establish trust with your visitor. Um, but for many cases, though, it's not necessary. Um, and just as an example of this, if I go back to the Wikipedia site, you can see it's using HTTPS, but if we take a closer look at their security or their certificate, you'll see there's just a lot less details associated with the certificate because this certificate is a free certificate that was generated by the service called Let's Encrypt. And the idea with this certificate is just to have it to set up that HTTPS connection so that we can have the encrypted communication between the server and the visitor. But we're not getting that additional level of verification that a paid for certificate authority would provide. But again, that level of authority is really only uh, important in certain circumstances. It's not something that every site needs. So now we understand that HTTPS provides two things. The first is encryption and the second is authenticity. Digging deeper, let's now talk about how it works. So coming back to the notes, let's scroll down to this section about how does HTTPS work. HTTPS uses something called TLS or Transport Layer Security. 
which is just a set of technologies that uses a key system to establish encryption between two different systems. And when we talk about visiting websites, the two systems we're talking about are your visitor's browser and your server. So what happens is, is when a request comes in from your visitor's browser to your server, the first thing the server is going to do is it's going to provide the browser a key. And it's going to say, all right, I want you to take this key. And anytime we are communicating data back and forth, I want you to use this particular key to encrypt that data. At the same time, the server is going to have its own private key that's going to be tied into that public key that was shared. And these keys, just like a lock and a key, are made to go together. So are the private key and the public key. And both sides are going to use these keys as data is passed back and forth to encrypt and decrypt that data. The end result, going back to what we were talking about previously in terms of a man in the middle attack, is that if anybody is listening in on the communication happening between the browser and the server, they're not going to be able to decrypt that communication or that data being sent back and forth because each public key is dynamic and specific to the browser making the request. This TLS protocol evolved from something called SSL or Secure Sockets Layer, which is why sometimes even today when we're talking about HTTPS, Sometimes we'll refer to things like SSL certificates, uh, or sometimes people will use terms like HTTPS and SSL uh, interchangeably. Speaking of SSL certificates, this brings us back to the discussion we were having earlier. Um, as part of this TLS communication uh, process, the server's gonna send to the browser a certificate that's essentially gonna verify itself. And as I was describing, the, the weight of that verification is gonna depend on the certificate itself. Um, if you're getting a paid for certificate from a third party certificate authority, that's going to carry more weight than a certificate you're getting from a free service like Let's Encrypt or even situations where you're generating the certificate yourself, which is another option. So in summary, there's really two big parts of the puzzle. You have the whole key system that is what's powering the encryption benefit we get from HTTPS. And then you have the certificates, which are powering the verification part of it. In regards to configuring and setting all of this up, I have a summary down here of the steps it takes. Step one is obtaining the certificate that you're going to be using, whether you're generating it yourself or getting it from a certificate authority, and then installing that certificate on your server. Step two is gener uh, generating the keys that are going to be used for the encryption process. And then finally, you have to configure your server to actually use the keys and the certificates. And all of that happens via uh, your individual site configurations. Now, that's a very broad overview. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the idea here was just to wrap our heads around HTTPS. Uh, if you want to dig into the specifics of setting all of this up, check out one of the other videos I have linked uh, in the description or here in the notes.